Our first guest is getting more of what she has earned after years in the entertainment industry. Erica Alexander. <laughs> Magazine that's out now. The cover says, All Hail the Queens. It is Erica, Tracy Ellis Ross, Easter Ray. Beautiful there. Erica is having a moment. She is nominated for an Independent Spirit Award for her role in the all star cast of the movie that critics say is an award winner. It is called American Fiction. The movie is about an author played by Golden Globe winning actor Jeffrey Wright, who's fed up with the media profiting from offensive stereotypes and tropes. It follows him and the people in his life who are trying to take control of their story. Here's a look. News. Editors. They want a black book. They have one. I'm black, and it's my book. Look at what they expect us to write. Would you read an excerpt? Yo, Sharonda, where you be going in a hurry like that? If and you gots to know, I was going to the pharmacy. Oh, when you live home, say, something's got to give. If they want stereotypes, I'll give them one. What is this? There'd be dads, rappers, crack, and splack, right? Nobody's gonna publish this. Just wanna rub their noses in it. We love it. What? what? It is very, uh... Black? Yes, that's it. I'm happy you said it and not me. <laughs> Congratulations. From another queen. Thank no, you so ma much. Ma'am, listen. All of these years in this business, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of these years in the business doing great work, how does it feel now to have them have you on the short list of people who may walk home with an Oscar? <laughs> well, let's go, baby. He says. <laughs> thank you, baby. <laughs> um, it, it, it took me 40 years to get to that short list. Yeah. Next year will be 40 years, and it just shows you that, um, like uh, Shirley Ralph said, yeah. you don't give up on your dreams, and you keep working toward them. But you have to also work hard and maintain quality. It really matters. And stay encouraged, because you can be encouraged to death and, uh, and, not, get and not get anywhere. So I'm very happy to be here. Trust okay, me. Okay, so I've got to get deep on you, because last thing is last year you went to the Oscars, and you were dropped off at the porta potty <laughs> Outside the building no. at the spirit. At, at, at it was award, the Independent in, Spirit Award. Independent Awards. Spirit Award. Yes, yes, um, yes. I was. I, 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 I had been invited to sit at someone's table, yeah. and um, if you don't have the proper, you know, credentials, the credentials you can't get through. And so he dropped me off and at the on the highway, and I walked across the sands, took off my shoes, went past the porta potty, put them back on, put on my smile, and acted like I got off with everybody else. And now and you're nominated you now for I'm an nominated award at that same at show. That same <laughs> you know how it goes. You know oh, how I it know. goes. I mean, and I know what it feels like in those moments because you're you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna just forge ahead. I'm gonna walk across this highway. I'm gonna hold my yes. head up high. Yes. And not knowing 12 months later they're about. You you don't know. And I was know. thinking at the time, I say, I do this for a living. This yeah. is an odd. <laughs> Dodging you know. cars across highways. It, it, you're like, exactly, wait a minute. This exactly. <laughs> But I believe that if you're a person that lives in a marginalized community, that's kind of the cross and burden you, you bear, is to yeah. walk across hot, hot sands, past porta potties, to victory. To victory. And you'll get there eventually. Yes, I got goosebumps when you said that. <laughs> no, I know it. So your character, Coraline, plays Monk's girlfriend, who's yes. brilliant as Jeffrey ooh. Wright. We have a clip of you in action. Take a look. Okay, ooh. What do you see in my brother? He's funny. Mm-hmm. He's not funny. No, not ha-ha funny. No. Like, sad funny. Okay. Like a three-legged dog. I see it now, like somebody dying on a toilet. Exactly. God. Yeah, exactly. In invariably, you, you, you go too far. You think? <laughs> I don't think I go far enough. It's becoming hurtful. Oh. See? You know, see? invariably, oh. you, you, you go too far. <laughs> yeah. You got a kiss, man. <laughs> Look at you, just by being pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> the chemistry, I 
me the chemistry of this cast is fantastic. What Cord was Jefferson. it like? A, a poor... That's Cord Jefferson. Yeah. Cord Jefferson is a very accomplished yeah. writer. He got an Emmy for Watchmen yes. with Damon Lindelof. He's written on all types of shows. His background is a journalist from the White House. Yeah. And, and he, he handpicked you without you auditioning. He sure did. Yeah. And uh, this is Percival Everett. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. I because have to that's give a, big a shout deal. out to Percival Everett, who did the original material where the, uh, it's adapted from. And he's the brilliant man that called us all forward. So many years ago, he made this. Uh, Core Jefferson read it, thought it would be great. And then in his mind's eye, he saw Jeffrey Wright. And then he went forward, and every person he sought said yes. But that's because he provided wonderful material. And he also invited us. It's wonderful to be invited to play, not go through games and audition. There's tons of, of, of tape on me if you want to see me perform. But if you want to have a conversation about actually doing something, then that's really different. And it brings a whole different kind of enthusiasm to the project. When you know you've been chosen, right? Yes. You've been chosen for that spot. That's right. I, I thought about a quote that I read from you. Um, you said when you were 14 years old, you really made some decisions about how you wanted to be represented and how you wanted to represent black women, especially in film, because you were 14, you'd been cast as a slave, as a prostitute, and... A that, foster child. A foster child. Yes. And those characters, what were being put in front of you, and at that young age, you yes. said, this is not the route for me. No, and I had said to my agent at the time, and, you know, I'm still in my teens, that I wanted to play an ingenue. And that's typically a category where you play, like, the Juliet, the object of desire. You might see Scarlett Johansson in that. Mm. And she said to me, no one would ever mistake you for an ingenue, Erica. Mm. I was 19. So How when your you own representation... I didn't. I didn't know what to say. You know, it hurt you. And yet I'm listening, going, well, why... She, I think she thought it was a backhanded compliment, like, you're much too serious of an actress, and that's, that's too light for you. But what she was saying is she was dooming me to having to play these really dour roles mm. that were always suffering and in pain. And luckily, that wasn't going to be my path. Think people saw me and put me in comedy. They took me across the, uh, the world the, the, with the Mahabharata, and I was on The Cosby Show, and I was on all these things that broke that curse. Oof. Listen. The victory is right here.